Hello, so today I'm going to be doing a video about um, what chemicals I use to help grow my orchids um, that are not fertilizers. So this is growth hormones, pesticides, and um, also I have a surfactant. So I'm going to start with the um, organic ones that are here on the right side. So first we have um, natural which is Bacillus thuringiensis subspecies so israelensis. And this is um, an organic uh, larvicide for um, some dipterans, which includes uh, fungus gnats and mosquitoes. So as you can see by the directions, you're going to mix this into water, and then you're going to water your plants with it. So this one I'm not using as much anymore since I've... Um, switch to a weekly cycle, um, a strict weekly watering cycle, and that's really helping my orchids dry out um, more consistently, which um, reduces um, the amount of fungus gnats that are going to want to go into the media and lay eggs. Because what fungus gnats do is when there's any decomposing medium, um, that can be roots or the medium itself, um, they will sense the carbon that's coming off of it or they'll perceive it and then they'll go in there and they'll lay their eggs. So the kind of first step that you want to take in controlling fungus gnats is uh, have a wet dry cycle and make sure there's no decomposing medium in the pot. Um, however, if you do run into fungus gnat uh, issues, you can use this and it will take care of your issue. So as you can see, it's a larvicide and not... Um, an adulticide, I guess. <laughs> it doesn't kill the adults. Um, it's going to kill the larvae. So it's not going to have an immediate effect. It's going to take about a couple, like three days to maybe a week for um, all the larvae to eat this and, then, you know, get messed up by it and uh, die off. So that's natural right here. That's the first organic one we're going to be looking at. The second organic helper that I have is natural wet. So I bought this originally um, to help with uh, this one back here, the Kelp Max. And because what I was having an issue with the Kelp Max is I was overusing it. And um, a lot of, uh, well, not a lot of my orchids, but enough for me to notice. Um, enough orchids for me to notice were having hormone imbalances, pushing out tons and tons of roots. And I don't really mind um, them pushing out roots but it was pushing out roots almost to the crown and then the leaves were coming out kind of crazy. I'll, uh, I'll see if I can take a picture of my orchid or a couple of orchids that I'm talking about and you can kind of see the effects of overuse of seaweed. Um, but that was happening because I was using the seaweed as uh, like in the fertilizing water and I think that was too high of a concentration. So I wanted to spray it on the leaves instead so they can get a lower dose of it. And Obviously the Kelp Max doesn't come with any surfactants or anything to help it spread over the surface of the leaf. And so I started looking into surfactants. And um, a lot of the surfactants, the synthetic sur surfactants, excuse me, the synthetic surfactants um, had a lot of crazy warning labels. They were basically used for outdoor agriculture and were not safe to be used indoors. And so that's why I got a natural wet, which is saponins derived from yucca. And actually it's only 10%. I saw one that had 30% of uh, yucca saponin. So I might try that one next because this one works, but I feel like it could be better. Um, also, I'm going to include a link to an article, um, uh, not an article, a scientific study that showed that saponins actually can work as either a pest deterrent or um, an anti feedant which kind of just makes the leaves taste gross to the insects. So it kind of does double work um, in helping control insects, but also um, mainly I got it to help with the uh, kelp max back here. Excuse me, the kelp max back here. And so next we have one of the oldest ones in my collection that I've been using since the beginning is um, neem oil. And neem oil, neem oil is great because as you can see, it does a fungicide, insecticide, and miticide. So um, 
things like imidacloprid, I'm going to have to do more uh, research on that. I think imidacloprid is good for mites, but um, as far as organics go, this is great because it's going to affect a wide range of insects and um, the insects are not easily able to form, um, uh, not e easily able to evolve resistance to the neem oil because the neem oil affects them in so many different ways that there is no way that they can um they can evolve a resistance to it so this one's really helpful and i also mix this with the natural wet um so i can get um a little bit of uh, extra uh pesticide action from the saponins and then the last organic helper that i use is kelp max and kelp max is great because um it really helps with root growth um, I guess it can help, it can help with flowering, but, um, when I've experienced flowering under kelp max, the flowers have been, the flowers have been distorted specifically with my Makotis Batola. Um, it pushed out a flower spike, um, when I was using the kelp max and, um, the flowers just looked really weird. Um, they're very distorted. So I've kind of backed off using this mainly because um the plants that i needed to grow roots have grown roots while using this um and i know i no longer need to use it especially now that i've um gotten led lights and i found that the main issue with my plants not growing roots was that they didn't have adequate lighting um and it wasn't necessarily anything that necessitated the kelp max um which is good to know now and now i just keep this for um, rescues and if I have an orchid that is really messed up um, I may use this I actually have a couple that I'm thinking about using this on um, because I have a, a nobilior ex ludemaniana catlea that is rootless and has been attacked by snails so I might be using this soon so that goes for my organic helpers I have the kilt max I have the neem oil I have um, the natural, which is Bacir uh, G N A T R O L, natural, um, which is a Bacillus thuringiensis subspecies Israelensis. And then I have the Yucca saponins um, for the surfactant. Now, on to the synthetic helpers is Trusty Fysan 20. Now, I like Fysan 20, it's great. Um, it works really well in stopping like rots, um, it especially works well in preventing any sort of bacterial infections, um, fungal infections. Now it says the viricide, the viricide activity, now that I've done more reading into it, is seems to be only on um, non-porous surfaces and not necessarily plants. So I wouldn't use this if you have well, I wouldn't use this anyway if you have um, orchid fleck virus on your plants because first of all, it's not going to kill the virus because the virus is all up and through the plant and the Fysen is not going to work like that. Um, but it does work well as a fungicide and bactericide. Um, it says right here. And it's just is really helpful. The only issue that I have with it is um, when your plants are in bud, um, before, like, not when the inflorescence is growing, but when it starts forming the buds and the buds are really young before, I would say before the buds have gained color, like when they're still green, um, the Fysan will burn the buds and they will drop off. So, um, if you have to spray your plant with Fysan and it's in bud, I would either cover up the inflorescence or I would spray it down and then after I would spray the inflorescence separately with water just to rinse off the Fysan. And I've found that when I spray the inflorescence off with water, um, cause there are some plants that the inflorescence is just either too big or it's in an area where I can't cover it effectively. And I find that spraying it with water um, makes it so that the Fysan isn't going to affect the buds um, as much as it would if you just left it on there. And the last helper that I have on the synthetic side and in the video is imidacloprid. And now, as you can see, this is not necessarily for orchids. And you will see on the back, 
in the mixing ingredients it has a it has it in square feet so it's kind of i've been kind of experimenting with this and i found that um two ounces per gallon and it comes with the measuring cup so you can see the maybe this side will be easier but you can see it's got ounces right there so it has a measuring cup with it and i found that two ounces um has no negative negative effects on the plants two ounces per gallon and um, it works very well as uh, for pest management. And now the issue, well, the reason why I've been experimenting with um, different dosages is because you don't want the dosage to be too low um, because that's going to encourage pesticide resistance. And the reason that I have these other, these other um, pesticides, insecticides, larvicides is because you want to rotate um, the pesticide that you're using and specifically the mode of action which you're going to want to do some research into but um basically all of these pesticides have different modes of action and that means that it's going to attack the insect in different ways and that's going to make it a lot more difficult if you rotate them it's going to make it more difficult for the insects um to develop a resistance to them but this is good if you have um like mealybug or any sort of cryptic pest that hide in the um, folds, crevices, things like that, that are hard to get to, um, obviously, because this goes through the plant. Um, and it just provides great protection in conjunction with these other two. So yeah, two, uh, two ounces per gallon of this concentrate, and then you just water with it like a fertilizer. I don't mix it. Well, actually, yeah, I have mixed it with fertilizer, and I haven't had any issues with mixing it with fertilizer, but um, I've also used it by itself. So yeah, we have our imidacloprid and our Fysan on the synthetics, and then we have our natural wet, natural neem oil and kelp max on the organic side and these are um the six um sort of substances that i use in growing my orchids so i hope you found this video interesting and i will see you later goodbye